Chapter 7, Gangster Granny Bags of Manure. Can I stay at Granny's again tonight? Announced Ben from the back seat of his mum and dad's little brown car. The diamonds in the biscuit tin were so puzzling. He was desperate to do some more detective work. Maybe even search every nook and cranny of the old lady's bungalow. This was all awfully mysterious. Raj had said his granny might have a secret or two. And it seemed like the news agent was right. And whatever Granny's secret was, it must be pretty amazing to explain all those diamonds. What if she used to be a zillionaire, or worked in a diamond mine, or been left them by a princess? Ben couldn't wait to find out. What? asked Dad, astonished. But you said she was boring, said Mum, equally astonished, irritated even. You said all old people are. I was just joking, said Ben. Then start Dad studied his son in the rearview mirror. He found understanding his plumbing-obsessed son hard enough at the best of times. Right now, Ben wasn't making any sense at all. Hmm. Well, if you are sure, Ben. I am sure, Dad. I'll call her when we get home just to check she's not going out. <laughs> going out? scoffed Mum. The old dear hasn't gone out for 20 years, she added with a chuckle. Ben wasn't sure why this was funny. I took her out to the garden centre that time, protested Dad. It was only because you needed someone to help you carry a load of bags of manure, said Mum. She had a super day out, though, said Dad, sounding miffed. Later, Ben sat alone on his bed. His mind was racing. Where on earth had Granny got the diamonds? How much were they worth? Why would she live in that sad little bungalow if she was so rich? Ben searched and searched his mind, but couldn't find any answers. Then, Dad entered the room. Granny's busy. She says she'd love to see you, but she's going out tonight, he announced. What? spluttered Ben. Granny hardly ever went out. Ben had seen her calendar. The mystery was getting even more mysterious. That's a tiny chapter. We'll do chapter 8 as well. <laughs> chapter 8. A small wig in a jar. Ben hid in the bushes outside Granny's bungalow. While Mum and Dad were downstairs, in the living room watching Strictly Stars dancing on the TV, Ben had slid down the drain pipe outside his bedroom window and cycled the five miles to Granny's. This alone was a sign of how curious Ben had become about his Granny. He didn't like cycling. His parents were always encouraging him to get more exercise. They told him that being fit was absolutely necessary if you wanted to be a professional dancer. But since it didn't make much difference when you were lying under a sink, screwing in a new length of copper piping, Ben had never willingly taken any exercise. Until now. If Granny was really going out for the first time in 20 years, Ben had to know where. It might just hold the key to how she came to have a ton of diamonds in her biscuit tin. So he huffed and puffed along the canal, towpath, on his clunky old bike until he came to grey clothes. The only thing was that, being November, instead of being drenched in sweat, Ben was only mildly moist. He had pedalled fast because he knew he didn't have that much time. Strictly stars, dancing, seemed to go on for hours, days even, but it had taken Ben half an hour to cycle over to Granny's, and as soon as the show was over, Mum Mum would be calling him downstairs for his tea. Ben's parents loved all the TV dancing shows, dancing on ice skates so you think you might be able to dance a bit, but they were completely obsessed with Strictly Stars dancing. They had recorded every single episode and had, and had an unrivaled collection of Strictly memorabilia in their house, including... A lime green thong, once worn by Flavio Flavioli, framed with a photograph of him wearing it. A Strictly Stars dancing, real, fake leather bookmark. Some athlete's foot powder, signed by Flavio's pro professional dance partner, the Austrian beauty, Eva Buns. His and hers official Strictly Stars dancing leg warmers. A CD of songs, nearly used on the show. A small wig in a jar that had been worn by the presenter, Sir Dirk Dottery. A life-size cardboard cutout of Flavio Flavioli 
that had some of mum's lipstick smudged around the mouth. Some earwax in a jar that belonged to a celebrity contestant, the politician Dame Rachel Prejudice, MP. A pair of tan tights that smelled of Eva Buns. A doodle on a napkin of a man's bottom drawn by the nasty judge, Craig Malteser Woodward. A set of official Strictly Stars dancing egg cups. A half, a half full tube of Raujex used by Flavio Flavioli. A Craig Malteser Wood posable action figure. A Hawaiian hot pizza crust that had been left by Flavio, complete with a signed letter of authenticity from Eva Munz. It was a Saturday, so after the show had finished, the family were going to be having cheesy beans and sausage. Neither mum nor dad could cook, but of all the ready-made meals Ben's mum took out of the freezer, pricked with a fork and placed in the microwave for three minutes, this was his favourite. Ben was hungry and didn't want to miss it, which meant he needed to get back from Granny's house quickly. If it had been a Monday night, say, and they were having chicken tikka lasagna, or a Wednesday and Donna kebab pizza, or a Sunday and Yorkshire pudding chow mein was on the menu, Ben wouldn't have been so bothered. There's a note that says, the supermarket chain where Ben's dad worked liked to bring the cuisine of two countries together in one easily microwavable pack. By combining dishes from different countries perhaps, they would be able to bring peace to a deeply divided world. Or maybe not. Night was falling. As it was late November, it was rapidly growing colder and darker, and Ben was shivering in the bushes as he spied on his granny. Where can she be going out, thought Ben. She hardly ever goes out. He saw a shadow move in her bungalow. Then her face appeared at the window, and Ben quickly shot out of view. The bushes rustled. Shh, thought Ben. Had the old lady seen him? After a few moments, the front door opened slowly, and out stepped a figure dressed entirely in black. A black jumper, black leggings, black gloves, black socks, probably even a black bra and knickers. A black balaclava disguised the face, but from the stoop, Ben knew it was Granny. She looked like someone from one of the covers of the books she loved reading. She straddled her mobility scooter and revved the engine. What on earth was going on? And more importantly, why was she dressed like a ninja? Ben propped his head against the bushes and got ready to tail his own grandmother, which was one thing he had never in a million years dreamed of doing. Like a spider scuttling around a bathroom trying not to be seen, Granny steered her, her scooter close to the walls. Ben followed on foot as quietly as possible. It wasn't too difficult to keep up, as the top speed of the mobility scooter was about four miles per hour. Whirring across the road, she suddenly looked back as if she had heard something, and Ben dived behind a tree. He waited, holding his breath. Nothing. After a few moments, he poked his head around the trunk and saw Granny had reached the end of the road. He continued his chase. Soon, they were near the town's high street. It was all but deserted. As it was early evening, all the shops had shut for the day, and the pubs and restaurants had yet to open for the night. Granny stayed out of the glow of the street lights, swerving into doorways as she neared her destination. Ben gasped when he saw where she had parked, the jeweler's shop. Necklaces and rings and watches sparkled in the window. Ben couldn't believe his eyes as Granny took out a tin of cabbage soup from the scooter's basket. She glanced around theatrically and then pulled her arm back in readiness to smash the tin through the jeweler's shop window. No! shouted Ben. Granny dropped the tin. It crashed to the ground and cabbage soup oozed out onto the pavement. Ben! Granny hissed. What are you doing here? And that's chapter 8. So today we had chapter seven and chapter eight. Granny looks like she's uh, in a bit of a pickle. We're going to continue with chapter 10 next time. Thank you all for watching. 
and I'll see you soon.